Mr. Kahn from the Institute of Innovative Technology and also a professor from the University in, in Wrocław. Uh, uh, and uh, so far I have registered one, two, one, two, three, four, four, five papers. The first presenter will be <coughs> Dr. Ben Yusu, and the paper is on efficient fault feature extraction and fault isolation for high voltage DC transmissions. Please go ahead. <coughs> Okay, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Yusu from China University of Mining and Technology. Uh, the title of my presentation <coughs> is uh, Efficient Fault Feature Extraction and Fault Isolation for High Voltage Disk Transmission. And the contents include um, five parts. The first is introduction. The second is the problem to be solved. And the third is the proposed solution. And the fourth is the experiments and results. And the last one is the conclusions and the future work. Uh, first is the introduction. Uh, as you all know, high voltage direct current transmission has been widely accepted as a new generation technical for transmission of the electric power. Uh, this is because compared with the AC transmission, uh, the DC transmission has the following advantages. The first is distribution, because it is, can be long distance and also it is more economical. The second is the quality in short distance because it can be a high quality <coughs> electrical power supply. And the third is technical. Uh, it can be operated at different frequencies. Also, it has a better stability. However, also it has some disadvantages because the transmission line is very long and also fault mechanism is very complex. So it is very difficult to identify the key useful components for fault detection. Uh, at present, there exist uh, several solutions. Uh, the first one is the time frequency analysis on current voltage signals. The second is the voltage transformer. The third is the independent component analysis. For the wavelet transformer, uh, it is powerful to nonlinear or no stationary signals. And uh, also, it is very efficient for high voltage uh, DC operation, but it only can deal with one sensor, one calculation. However, independent component analysis has the ability to process the multi-channel sensor. So we have a idea we can combine the third <coughs> and the second together to process the data. So this is, this is our um, proposed mm -hmm. solutions. Uh, this is the workflow, and uh, this part. Sorry. Okay. So this part, uh, the purpose of this part, uh, we try to get the model data, and uh, after get the model data, we will input the network. Also, the new signals it means measure the data from the. Uh, transmission line, and uh, after processed of my master, also we input the network, and the network will compile two information, and then it will output the report. The report will tell us what fault it is. Uh, next is experiments and results. 
uh, first and the numerical simulation uh, in this simulation we choose the model of the first is a ground fault the second is land to land fault uh, and the third is curved fault of the land to ground and land to land and uh, and this is the signal uh, original signal and this is the normal state and this is the line to line fault and this is the DJ fault and this is the curve to line ground and line to line fault for this original data we process using the ACA and this is the result processed by the ACA method and for this uh, new data, we continue to process using the wavelet transformer. And uh, after the processor, we will get the energy distribution. Uh, as shown in this table, uh, for different states, we will get the different uh, energy distribution. Based on, based on those data, we will get the uh, detection rate. Um, this uh, data, this data, uh, this rate is get from using different methods also, and this is my method or methods. So compared with other methods, uh, our method result uh, is better. It is better. The next is experimental. Uh, and this estimator is done in the bundle transmission line. And uh, this is one example. And this is the uh, original data. And this is the uh, original data is processor using IC8. Also, for this data, we will process the continue use the uh, wavelength transformer. And this is the uh, uh, process data. Also, this data is uh, normal state. So, next uh, we will get uh, the detection rate. Also, this is uh, our method. Also, compared with other method, uh, this uh, detection rate is better. So, next is our conclusion. In this research, we try to combine the SA and wavelet letter to process the data. Uh, also, uh, both numerical simulation and uh, experimental test shows uh, this method <coughs> is uh, reliable and feasible. Uh, next is our future work. Uh, in the future, we will continue to develop the room bond condition monitoring. Uh, also, we try to uh, put this measure, uh, use this method uh, in the practical application. Uh, okay, this is my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we'll take a look from discussion. Is there anybody who has some question? Oh, please, no, no, it's you. Uh, may I have a question for you? Uh, of, thank you. That's very interesting, interesting paper. You know, that's, uh, but the, the most often we have in the power line, we have uh, fall to the ground. Yeah. And the, the most dangerous, I know dangerous, but the most, most difficult to detect it, yes, when yes. the ground resistance is very high. Yeah. If, uh, if uh, it's resistance is equal to zero, there's no problem with detecting this. But with increase of resistance, if, if for example, you have a broken overhead mm. line mm. And, and touch to the ground, yeah. and the touch on the, on the stone or the sand, the resistance is very high. Are you able to detect such a, such a, such a thing since in this way, the current flowing is very little? Because uh, this is just the uh, simulation and uh, this uh, technique have not been used in practical application. But uh, in the uh, simulation, it can be. But that, that's your work is only simulation, right? Yes. Okay, I understand. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen, according to the schedule, the next should be the, the paper presented by Mr. Onku from Turkey. Is, the, is anybody? No? Uh, this is uh, the sibling. Therefore, the, 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 the next, uh, let me have a presentation. My presentation. Thank you very much. 
Okay, gentlemen, uh, uh, that's, uh, the title is here, the Perseverative Balancing the Middle Voltage Network with the Use of Active Power Filter. Uh, there's a cooperative paper together with uh, the Professor University of Technology and the Institute of Innovative Technology. It's, uh, my name is Bogdan Mijinski. Okay. First is the introduction, just a few words about the motivation was going on. Then the possibility of low balancing in the middle voltage with use active power filter. Then the theory of the uh, physical current components. It's, uh, there are many different theories. We use this, this, this theory to develop the algorithm for to control this, uh, this, uh, this system, and then application active power filter, and then in conclusions. Uh, for everybody, it's, uh, it's, it's common that in middle voltage distribution networks, uh, very often we have uh, unbalancing on asymmetry of that. This asymmetry uh, can be due to both uh, supply system and both to the load as well. And they, uh, particularly that's, uh, that's visible in a long line supplying the, the huge distance when the, the load, uh, the one phase load is, is almost impossible to, to distribute uni uniformly. Therefore, that uh, uh, asymmetry, uh, imbalance is unavoidable in the, in the system. However, <coughs> however this, it, depends, it depends on the range. Uh, that's, not, that's no problem with voltage. Voltage it seems to be a little bit symmetry, but there's a big difference in the, in the current loading the particular phases. And the current can generate the voltage drop, and the voltage drop in the common in the in the common system uh, can generate this this voltage <coughs> with quality of energy is very poor. As you very well know, that uh, in a case of asymmetry, immediately we have a symmetric components. Yet uh, we use the symmetric components to analyze just such a system. You know, positive, negative, and zero sequence components. If it's asymmetry, immediately we have uh, two different components. Zero sequence components and negative components. Zero sequence is not any problem since in a zero sequence, even even voltage exists for for the current to flow. We have to have to the closed circuit. But for the for the negative components, that's a, that's a problem since if, if only we have a negative components, they produce rotating magnetic field as you very well know. They're rotating in opposite to the positive component. And immediately is dangerous for the electrical motors. First of all, if about uh, if about uh, mm, uh, if about the problem of a load, you know, that's, uh, we have very asymmetrical load also in industrial lines. For example, in the uh, welding machines, in the uh, high speed uh, transportation, railway transportation, that's very, that's also, that's also created a lot of problems. And we were, uh, we were doing with, uh, uh, with the induction, induction furnace in, the, in a huge, huge uh, um, uh, mine, a copper mine is in Poland, is a set, uh, set company in, in the world. And therefore, we, we did it for selected induction furnace for melting. Uh, that's, a, that's a selection of this of the system. We, we check, we make uh, measurements that, uh, you, as you see, <coughs> that's, uh, that's a melting, that's a furnace, that's a <coughs> furnace, that's simply inductor. That's simply inductor. And here, this inductor is supplied via transformers. The transformer is 1.6 megavolts amps. And here, as you see, that's uh, there's a one phase supply. And this, uh, the primary winding is due to the metal which be, will be melted. Uh, therefore, the, the work of is very unstable, and therefore, and also there's a high inductance here. And to reduce inductance in this circuit, which is composed of the of this inductor and the two branches, we have a capacity and in additional inductance. Uh, that's a compensation system. We use the capacity to compensate inductive current. Since in this system, the, the, the power factor, I mean, the cosine is very little, is point, point 0.3, point 0.4, something like this. Therefore, it draw tremendous, it, it would draw tremendous current through the transformer. To reduce it, it's, everything is done. That's asymmetrical, asymmetrical load. Therefore, to reduce it, usually we use symmetrization. We call this symmetrization. And symmetrization is made by Steinmetz. Steinmetz is uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. It was 19 something like this. And this, it, is, it is consists of a capacity and in additional inductance. However, it works good but for only for steady states. But in this case, we have, uh, we have very transient states since it, everything depends on the, on the stuff, on the stuff we have inside, on the metal which, is, which can be melted. And of course, this is being used for compensation for the for the electric for the power comp compensation. Uh, we checked we checked as you see that we we checked uh, we checked the uh, currents we checked the voltages at both sides uh, the middle volt side low volt sides best things and things, and we found out that if about the voltage uh, the pr the primary system at uh, the six kilovolts there's no asymmetry 
No, it's, it's very little. As you will see, there's a difference in, uh, between the IMS values, very little. However, if about the current, we have, a, we, have a, we have a problem. We have a problem not only with asymmetry, is not balancing, but also that, say, the wave are uh, distorted, tremendously distorted, therefore we have uh, high harmonics. The high harmonics is not also very good, since high harmonic flows through the transformers, and transformers wa work like a filter, and uh, in this filter we, we have to dissipate energy, and very often, it in the form this, this transformer is damaged. The usually transformer, the power transformer, this, uh, this very expensive transformer, should work about the 20, 30 years, but very often after four years, it's already, it's already over. That's the a, that's a, that's a main, main, main problem. If about the, the, the secondary side, as you see, as the voltage is also, looks also symmetrical without any problems. However, the current is a, a, a tremendous difference, and tremendous difference is up to about 200% between particular phases, and even the, the, the difference, uh, the sh shift, angle shift is also very different. Therefore, in secondary, in secondary we, have, we, have, we have really problems. Uh, we compared IMS value measured of that, and you can see if about the primary voltage is a very little, therefore it is almost almost the same as level, uh, and the and the secondary also <coughs> the voltage it seems to be also okay. Therefore, with the voltage is not any problem. However, with the current, you see, and the secondary, you see, there's a big difference. There's a big asymmetry. Is about 800. Is about 550, and the big deformation. It's like this. This, this results from the fact that this, uh, this, uh, this heater is switched uh, periodically, or something like this. Therefore, as a matter of fact, we have in the primary current also we have asymmetry. You see asymmetry, at about 50% uh, asymmetry with such a things. And uh, what to do? You know, uh, how, to, how can we uh, over this problem? It's, um, since the, as, uh, it is obvious that this uh, static compensation system doesn't work. Uh, therefore, we decided to apply the um, uh, active power filter. The active power filter is a filter is a filter which is basically developed for the compensation of power compensation, reactive power compensation, in the case when the both current and voltage waveform are, are deformed. And we use it. And uh, we selected are many different theories, and we we are based on the theory of uh, CPC. Uh, current physical components, which is um, uh, uh, invited by, by invented by Professor Charnetsky, and however, there, there's not only one. There are many different theories, but this it was found that this theory is very convenient for us. Basing on this theory, we developed the arg algorithm for control of the filter, and we got a very good result, as you will see. Uh, what is uh, the principle of this of this uh, theory of this uh, CSC component? We, we have, when you have a, and, and the, this is the load, and this is the source. A uh, source can be nonlinear. There's a high harmonics in here. Load or can be also nonlinear, and uh, therefore we have uh, we divided the harmonics in two parts. One is the harmonics for, for which uh, the active power is positive. That means the energy is developed is delivered from the source to the load, and another subset. This harmonics the load load operates like a, uh, like a source and send the power back to the to the source. Therefore, as a matter of fact. We have uh, two two equivalent systems. You know, first for the when the energy is totally sent from the source uh, to the load, we have uh, such a component. You know, that's a, that's an active component, which is uh, the basic component which must be delivered to the load. And then we have uh, n balance. That's n balance. That's uh, which is uh, the, the the reactive power that results from this fact. And that's so-called scattering. A scattering results from the fact that uh, uh, the voltage is uh, this, this also this nonlinear uh, value and also it depends on harmonics. That's in the case when the source uh, works like a source and deliver energy. And uh, the, the, this, uh, this theory developed uh, the physical current components is very useful since physically we have uh, different components and if we wish there are some equations and basing on this equation, we can compensate particular components. Therefore, we are able to compensate it. And therefore, since it is imbalance, which in this case is a key factor, we can compensate this value and also we get balance of that. In another case, when the, when the load is nonlinear load and send energy back to the source. Therefore, in this case, the load became the source and source became, became a load. And uh, as a matter of fact, as I already said, we distinguish here few harmonics, few, few components, there's uh, active components, there's, uh, the, there's responsible for the active power from source to, 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 the, to the load. This is a scatter component, the scatter component is, a, is a occurring at the presence of harmonics in the supply voltage or in the impedance of load, it depends on frequency. 
And then there's the uh, ARC harmonics as a component, passive components, correlated with the uh, occurrence of the receiver susceptance. Then is the end balance. End balance is components in the absence of balance of sources in those sites. And as a matter of fact, is IB components. IB components is include higher harmony generated to the network by nonlinear load. Therefore, the having this data, we can compensate each harmonics or particular harmonics up to us to obtain only the active harmonics, which is very useful in this case. When we compare IMS values, Rosem, we obtain the, the polygon of the current components. As you see, the, the, this value is, perpe is perpendicular to that, and that is perpendicular to the sum of that, something like this. That's uh, this is equivalent. This all harmonics we can we can compensate. And uh, we develop, based on this theory, we, we, we develop algorithm for control the active power filter based on the current physical components. You see that uh, analyze on harmonics, <coughs> analyze harmonics and currents, the calculation of the apparent power and the uh, real power and reactive power, then separation harmonics in two sets. In two sets, one is a, the subset NA and another to subset NB. That's all depending on the, on the sign of that. Then the calculation of this, then the calculation, and as a matter of fact, we can calculate this, va this value, and we can compensate, we can generate, we can generate a, a, and inject such a value to the system to compensate this, this component. Uh, to prove it, we, we perform the uh, simulation. But simulation is a simulation. And everybody can do a simulation, but you have to, to check it experimentally, what's going on. And we did an experiment, that's an experiment, experimental set. An experimental was done for uh, uh, N-balance, both linear. Linear is not, rec not uh, supplied by rectified, but the unload load. And non-linear load, non-linear load is, is, is a load supplied by rectifier. That's a non-linear load. And also this asymmetry, asymmetry was made <coughs> by, by performing by resistance between two phases. And here in this case, we have an active power filter which is based on these things. That's a transformer about 10 megavolts amps. And as a matter of fact, <coughs> you see that's, a, that's, a, that's effect of a APF application, that before application, after application. You see that's, a, that's for, for uh, asymmetry. However, with, with linear load, with linear load, you said the load is linear, there is no deformation. However, there's only difference in the value. This value is also smaller. When we use these things, it already is already symmetrical. And uh, however, the worst situation is when, the, when we have uh, asymmetry, I mean, end balancing, and also deformation of the current and, and the voltage waveforms, like here, the deformation of current waveforms that before application as it's after application. That's the currents. Of course, they not look like ideal, but it's similar than you just some little like flickers, something like this, but this results from the bad filtration of that. Therefore, these results are very optimistic. And uh, what we do just now, we concluded that uh, this end balance load for particular things can be overcome here, but using this, our system. And we plan to do this to develop the structure of this type of balancing system for, you, for metal foundries. That's metal foundries. The worst situation is when we have uh, only one inductor. Therefore, the, the stability is very bad. And for these things, we, we, are, we are trying just now to, to develop such a system and to involve some system in practice. Perhaps in the close future, I would be able to send you more details if, if I am able to do that. OK, thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> I would be pleased to have a question from you to have a chance to answer it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm confused. Uh, the load is quite high, and you are using just one phase. Uh, what do I face? Was it three phase? Mm. I think it was like number four something. I see. Yeah, this, this is. What do you mean? The one, one at the bottom left. Here? Yeah. Yeah, that's one phase. Uh, that's the worst situation. It, it depends on the power of the furnace. There's only one, one inductor. In yeah, the, in I, I, in I know, but is it necessary? Is it necessary to use just one phase? No necessary. In another, in another company, they use another heater, and in this another heater, to, to make uh, the balance, is composed of the six such things. And they are supplied by different line, line them. and this way we get better result. However, still is a, is a, is a problem. We already tested such sort of things. And my next question is: mm -hmm. uh, for motors, we have uh, frequency converter. Mm -hmm. 
Isn't it possible to arrange similar same thing uh, for the heater? Uh, then uh, the control would have been smoother. You don't have to switch on and off uh, rapidly. You can do it smoothly. Absolutely, absolutely, you are right. But you know that's that's. But doesn't depend on us. You know, it depends on the company. We first we have to. Uh, to find out some people who will support us and allow us to do that mm -hmm. and give us money for doing but that. Once you do the correction, uh, actually for them it's no longer important what you do. Oh yeah, that you, you do. Oh, you okay. Just supply the power and this is it. That's right, you're absolutely right. Right. Okay. Uh, as a non expert in this field, I was only curious when you connect various active power filters to the network. Does it somehow affect uh, power consumption instruments? That's very little. Really? It's about less than 5%. Well, you, you don't distort, uh, because there are instruments on the, on the internet, they say, just by connecting, you will not pay for uh, power consumption. No, 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 no. It's a power consumption we check is about less than 5%. I mean, I'm talking <coughs> about the active power consumption. It's about 5%. Okay, more question? Thank you very much for your attention. <coughs> okay, uh, the next speaker will be speaking. Okay, please. Wait a moment, therefore, it will be next, okay? Sorry. It uh, will be Dr. Uh, pardon, Dr. Oze? Yes, right? Oze. Okay, please go ahead. You have reduction of AMIE with caustic space vector modulation and direct torque control. Please go ahead. I'm sorry, that's it. Yeah, Thank you. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Bedri Özer. I am from Turkey, Fırat University. Uh, these photos are uh, my historical cities photos. My presentation title is Reduction of Electromagnetic Interference with Chaotic Space Vector Modulation in Direct Torque Control. Direct Torque Control is uh, a useful control method for AC drives and uh, space vector modulation is a modulation technique. Uh, our aim is uh, to reduce the electromagnetic interference in AC drives. As you know, all uh, electrical system have specific electromagnetic interference limit. In AC drives, inverters are one of the main sources of electromagnetic interfaces. Filters and other classical uh, electromagnetic interface reduction methods bring extra cost and weights. So, uh, aim of this paper is that uh, the resolution of electromagnetic interference uh, is to prevent it from its source. Uh, sorry. We choose permanent magnet, uh, permanent magnet sen uh, synchro motor for this aim. Why we choose this motor? Because it is uh, uh, it has become really competitive to an asynchro motor uh, in terms of lifetime cost. This motor has recently become quite attractive due to its many advantages. In induction motor, uh, the rotors have windings, but in this uh, motor type, rotor has only magnets, so it's the advantage of this kind of motors. But uh, there is an disadvantage. There is a disadvantage of these motors: fuzz inductance of surface sur surface mounted permanent magnet signal motor is less than induction motor. So the effect of electromagnetic noise is greater when compared to induction motor. Uh, why we choose direct torque control method? Direct torque control method is a high performance control method. was originally developed for asynchron motors and then it was applied to permanent magnet synchron motors. But uh, there is a des disadvantage of uh, director control methods. What is that? Uh, variable and low switching frequency, acoustic noise, high torque, and high flux ripples, sensitivity uh, stutter resistance, 
temperature at low frequencies and integrator deviations can be considered as the disadvantages of conventional direct torque control methods. Uh, many methods were used to improve the weakness of uh, the conventional direct torque control methods. Many studies have been conducted on space vector direct torque control methods. Uh, but uh, some other features are available, such as excessive knowledge of parameters, rotary coordinate transformation, and high competitions are the disadvantages of uh, space vector modulation. In literature, there are many uh, studies uh, for, redu uh, for reduction of electromagnetic interference. Uh, random PVM techniques has been developed for this aim. Random PVM are carried out in various ways, such as random switching frequency, random pulse position technique, random switching techniques, and etc. It was displayed that acoustic noise and electromagnetic interference were suppressed by using, ran by using random PVM techniques in space vector modulation algorithms. And uh, literature go on. Methods having various switching frequencies, like random or chaotic PVM, are generally applied to induction motor. However, in this context, there are a limited there are a limited number of research about random PVM on a permanent magnet synchrome motors. Chaotic PVM techniques are the ones developed as an alternative to random PVM techniques. Uh, chaotic signal is obtained more easily than the random signal, and it's also simpler to apply. Uh, Zeng and all in their research said that applied chaotic PVM methods to the induction motor drive and indicated that electromagnetic interface, acoustic noise, and mechanical vibrations are reduced. Our aim is this red one, studies, studies using chaotic PVM in permanent magnet synchro motor drives could not be found in the literature. Uh, what is electromagnetic interference? As all know, current and voltage wave forms include harmonics at higher levels of energy above the main frequency. Uh, however, uh, I can pass this to say. However, it would be more beneficial and more eff effective to find solutions to problem at its source. Formula, uh, uh, yes, it's important. Electromagnetic <coughs> interface spreading via transmission path is comprised of two categories. One is common mode CM and other is differential mode. Common mode, uh, uh, mode is that uh, com in common mode currents are measured between phase and ground. But in differential mode, currents are measured between the different phases of the inverter. This one uh, ground and one phase, this one different two phase. And this is the formulas of VCM and VDM. This is the classical conventional uh, space vector modulations uh, formulas space vector formulas uh, and the other formulas. Uh, in our proposed method, we focus angular velocity. In this uh, conventional method, here is fixed. But in our <coughs> proposed method, we change it by chaotically. You will show. Uh, we use logistic map, which is the well-known chaotic map. Uh, its formula is in the equation 8. This is a chaotic map. Uh, his, uh, its name is logistic map. A is the parameter. And this is a graphic of logistic map bifurcation diagram. This axis is Xn. And this axis is parameter, A parameter. As you shown in the figure, after 3.6, this map behave chaotic. Uh, this map, uh, this map is a. This map seems chaotic behavior. After three point 
seven, six here. We use chaotic map in this range. We use chaotic map in this range. How we can use it? The proposed chaotic space vector modulation frequency formula is that uh, F is real switching frequency, FCV for fixed switching frequency, delta F for amount of frequency change, FM for modulation frequency, mm. and this XN is a parameter coming from our chaotic map, logistic map here. He changed the frequency. He changed the frequency of inverter. This is the uh, examples of switching frequencies. TA, TB, TC formulas are given here. And the results of PVM output is like that. This is the all model, proposed all model. Space vector modulation uh, inverter. Uh, direct torque control, so uh, torque reference. PI controller. Equation 19. Uh, equation 19 is here. This is the our proposed method. The chaotic space vector direct torque control method. Inverters output. Uh, here, here, here. Uh, this is come from <coughs> permanent magnet sen sen synchron motors, UDC and voltage and um, uh, currents. <coughs> I want to give some resolution, some uh, uh, results. We mentioned uh, VCM and VDM. This is classical conventional direct torque control, power spectral density. This is our proposed method. And this is another method in literature, random space vector modulation. Random space vector modulation. It's new in literature. It's our proposed method. And it is conventional space vector modulation. As you seen, harmonics are bigger in this situation. Uh, figure B and figure C are good, better than this. Uh, the same is for VDM, uh, conventional space vector modulation, our proposed method and uh, another literature, another new method, random space vector modulation. Uh, another result for stutter currents, uh, power spectrum of stutter currents, uh, conventional director control, <coughs> our proposed methods, and another methods. The last result is harmonic analysis for stutter current. As you see, near switching frequency, there is a big harmonic in classical conventional uh, sorry, conventional director control, but our proposed method, it is not seen like this. Conclusion, in the simulations, uh, conventional space vector director control methods, chaotic uh, space vector director control, and random space vector director control are compared. In comparisons, Electromagnetic inference and acoustic noise noise levels in chaotic space vector director control and random space vector direct con director control are lower when compared to those of conventional space vector director control method. In addition, it is observed that the current harmonics around the switching frequency are also decreased. The results are closed in chaotic modulation method and random mod modulation method. However, when compared to the chaotic signal, it is more difficult to obtain and apply random signal. But chaotic signal can be readily obtained from an a chaotic oscillator or a chaotic map, map like a logistic map. Therefore, it can be said that chaotic methods would be more efficient and applicable 
then uh, random space vector director control methods. Thank you for attention. The torque uh, on the shaft or the electrical motor, right? Yes. Okay. In which way you may measure it? Use a sensor on this? Uh, sensors and estimating part. Right. Okay, but estimating is a okay. But the first, you have some signal on sensor. You you, yes. put, you put the sensor tensometer, yes. tensometer, something like yes, that. Yes, yes, sensor. Tensometer. And in which way is it you send the signal? Since uh, this is that's a serious problem, you know. Which way you send it? Wire, wireless. The wire. Wire. Wire at its simulation study, not uh, practical uh, okay. study. Okay, but uh, even that is very interesting. And we also we also we, we face this problem, and uh, we don't know how to how to overcome it. But it's your this your inter very interesting way. But we plan to do it in the, in the wireless way. Is it worse worse situation? Is okay. worse situation than that is. But th that's very useful in future works. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, please go ahead. I have, I have one question. Actually, we are talking about the EMI, correct? Electromagnet interference. Mm -hmm. So I think that when we look at the frequency, so I see that on the X scale, the, you go to a killer, you know, 25 kilohertz. Uh, yes, sir. There are uh, standards for the uh, AC drivers or any uh, electronic equipment. I think it is good to look at the megahertz to see the electromagnetic interference to meet the standards. But as much as I can see here, that we look at only the harmonics, you know. I was expecting, you know, I was trying to, I, I, I'm, I'm, I was planning to see that, you know, the, the, the megahertz level frequency is supposed to be higher here, maybe 400 kilohertz, uh, megahertz to see the interference uh, with the uh, grip. And then after that, we can say that this device, this driver, require a EMI filter or not. Now, up to here, only I can say that the, in terms of the harmonics, there are more or less. And uh, as a number, if I see the THD, like I will be 519, the standards, if you go put it there, you know, this is the uh, THD of the, our design is, for example, 15%, the other was 10%, uh, whatever. Okay. And uh, this is, this, did you look at the, the higher frequencies, like a megahertz? No, I didn't look. Okay. But in similar uh, studies, I see that uh, 9 to 150 kilohertz are used. So uh, I use this range. But the, but the industry to be accepted, this driver, uh -huh. so it is good to look at the class A, class B, it is going up yes. to megahertz. Right. And the other thing is switching is uh, the space vector uh, modulation you are doing. And uh, what was the uh, procedure or algorithm to uh, choose the zero vector? Is, do you have any... Uh, no standard zero vector. Uh, because you can have uh, different zero vectors, zero, 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 or one, uh, one, one. As you know, uh, eight vector are yes. what, two of do them. You have, do you have any preference to choose? Because it may affect the EMI. So because the EMI is, you know, the case of the, actually this is a, this is simulation, but still I think it may affect the EMI, you know, the choosing the zero vector. Because it is, Telling you that transition in the states, you know, you you choose the wrong zero states, so it make uh, more switchings, so it, it, it will affect definitely the uh, yeah. Yeah. more switching, more vibrations. Yeah. We use this equation to select the vectors. Six of them are active, two of them are zero. Mm -hmm. yes. uh -huh. We use this formula. Yes. Stand, uh, classic. One, yeah, but which one do you pick? Sorry? There are two choices, am I right, for the zero? Yes. Which one do you pick, you know? Because two, one? Yes. Do you, do you have any preference for that? No, no. no. Thank, Thank you, you very much. No question? If not, Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, my pleasure.
Okay, uh, the next is the guy who is the late. It's, uh, please, I'm so sorry. That's uh, this. You came from Turkey or just you drank a lot yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, that's. Uh, uh, you have you as a second author, yeah? And you are talking about the simulant model of parallel resonance or something like that? Yes, okay. uh, simulant model of parallel resonance. Yeah, okay. And your name is uh, Selim Sim Monku, your doctor? Yes. Okay, please go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Selim Öncü. Uh, I work in Karabük University Department of Electrical Engineering and uh, I am from Turkey. Our study is about simulink model of parallel resonant inverter with DSP based PLL controller. Uh, power density of uh, converters can be increased by increasing the switching frequency However, there are some problems when we increase the switching frequency. Uh, switching losses are increases when we choose higher switching frequencies. Uh, but by using resonant converters, switching frequencies can be decreased by soft switching techniques. So we studied about a soft switching technique in a parallel resonant inverter and we controlled the co uh, this inverter by using DSP control module. Switching losses, uh, in order to reduce switching losses, resonance frequency has an important role in this kind of converters or inverters. So, uh, first of all, we choose the resonance frequency and uh, we try to cache this resonance frequency. In this study, in our study, uh, we used closed loop phase lock loop uh, control techni technique for parallel resonant inverter and we designed to uh, track the resonant frequency uh, in this inverter. In the literature we found that some, some uh, PLL control techniques by using DSPs were studied. Uh, these are generally about series resonance converters or series resonance inverters. Uh, we applied this technique to parallel resonant inverter. And designed inverter is simulated with <coughs> MATLAB Simulink uh, module. The validity of the Simulink model of current source inverter, it is another name of parallel resonant inverter, is tested for different load and gain uh, levels and simulated uh, DSP control unit can be implemented by uh, TMS 28F uh, 335 model. After this study, we, we applied uh, and we set the experimental study uh, and we test it by experimentally. What is current source inverter? You see from the figure that uh, current source inverter has two uh, be unidirectional switch and a resonant bridge like this RLC parallel resonant bridge and uh, filter coil uh, DC voltage source and unidirectional switch like this these switches can be IGBT MOSFET or BGT and these diodes blocks the uh, anti-parallel currents uh, one of the main advantage of current source inverter has the circuit, short circuit protection capability and power switch can be driven with similar simple gate drive circuits because all the switches are uh, common mode they have ground connection and equivalent circuit of parallel resonant inverter can be driven like this the Voltage source and <coughs> filter coil can be modeled as a square wave current source and parallel resonance circuit is the same. Uh, according to switching of power switches, MOSFETs or IGBTs, we can create a square wave uh, input current to resonance circuit. According to resonance circuit and 
changing the frequency output power of the circuit can be uh, changed. In the inverter, the fundamental component of the generated square wave current sin sinusoidal at resonant frequency. <coughs> it means that when we choose switching frequency at resonance frequency, uh, uh, fundamental component of the square wave current will be purely sinusoidal. The resonance circuit behaves, behaves like a purely resistive load when we choose resonance frequency uh, as a switching frequency. Therefore, Therefore, soft switching, it means in this circuit, zero voltage switching can be accomplished. And these are theoretical waveforms of uh, parallel resonance conver inverter. Uh, this is uh, control signal of power switch, and square wave current is driven by this current, uh, by this switch, power switch. Uh, according to uh, switching frequency, when you choose, when we choose this converter frequency to the resonance frequency, uh, output voltage of the circuit, output voltage of the circuit will be in phase with uh, input current of the inverter branch. So, uh, switch current and switch voltage will be in this <coughs> chain. It means that zero voltage turn on and zero voltage turn off. As a result, zero voltage switching can be achieved. According to this, we, uh, we need to track the resonant frequency to have soft switching conditions. Now, uh, I will explain the DSP control unit to accomplish the track the resonant frequency. The output voltage of the inverter is detected and discretized by the DSP. Uh, the MOSFET gate signals is compared with output voltage and phase difference between output voltage and switching uh, signal is detected with X or gate, logical gate, but in the DSP model. The logical output is filtered to the DC volume, volume by the low pass filter. It has a DC component and the difference between these two signals according to uh, DC value is discretized and new periodic period is calculated. Uh, this period is a result of error between uh, phase difference between uh, MOSFET gain signal and output voltage. The new MOSFET drive signal is generated with voltage controlled oscillator. As a result, the inverter tracks the resonant frequency by minimizing the error between uh, these two different signals. And the block diagram of this explanation is seen in this figure. According to this, here is our parallel resonant inverter. And we control the switch by the SP control unit. It uh, detects the output voltage and discretizes it. Voltage control oscillator and uh, gate signal is compared with XOR gate block. And low pass filter, we have DC component and according to this DC component, we create a new uh, frequency by using voltage control oscillator. And error is uh, minimized by using two different signals uh, according to new voltage of low pass filter new frequency is near the resonant frequency or adjust the uh, accurate resonant frequency <coughs> and our simulic model is seen now uh, in this figure here is our uh, RLC uh, parallel network this is low pass uh, sorry, uh, filter coil, choke coil, and DC voltage source are uh, blocking diodes, power MOSFETs, and PLL system block, and voltage sensor. In PLL system block, there are uh, voltage uh, sensing part and the screen time integrator XOR gate, as seen before the block diagram and we uh, create a new voltage according to this error signal. Here is 
uh, the uh, low pass filter and DC uh, voltage is uh, input as discrete time integrated voltage control oscillator. <coughs> as a result, new uh, switching frequency is calculated in this point. And some uh, simulation results uh, are taken by Simulink mode. Our uh, test conditions for two different loads, one of them is 150 and the other one is uh, 300 ohm uh, loads and uh, we use same uh, inductors for choke coil and for different resonant conditions we ch change the resonant condens condens uh, con uh, capacitor uh, according to this we start uh, from 33 kilohertz initial frequency and according to this uh, frequency we uh, try to catch the resonant frequency here, this is the startup condition of uh, our proposed uh, study, and it starts with same, but after that, load uh, current and voltage is uh, phase difference is 90 degree. Uh, it is catched. It is seen after time, uh, a, a bit time later. This is discrete time integrator output uh, signal and uh, load voltage uh, starts the uh, conditions uh, in this point, one millisecond. I, another uh, simulation results for different load values. And this is, this is uh, switch current and this one is switch voltage According to these simulation results, we can see that it is in same phase uh, and zero voltage switching in these points can be accomplished by uh, using our uh, the DSP control unit. In and it means that PLL is achieved by using DSP controlled model. It is very important to achieve zero voltage switching for high frequency and high power converters. Another uh, test results for load B, as seen from the figure, it is also uh, achieved zero voltage switching for different loads. Some uh, calculated and simulated results is shown in this page. Uh, according to simulated and calculated results, it is very nearly the same. We have good uh, results from calculated and simulated points. As a result, in this paper we used a DSP controlled PLL algorithm while using MATLAB Simulink module. Uh, according to simulation and calculation results, a designed PLL algorithm for the parallel resonant inverter tracks the resonant frequency perfectly for different quality factors and resonant parameters. This, the system performance is tested for different uh, discretized integrated module and we sh uh, show that uh, it can be accomplished for different load conditions. Thank you very much uh, for your attendance. Thank hey, you. Any, any questions? Presentation question. Please. Uh, I want to ask what was the frequency of your PWM signals? We start with initial frequency and we can choose it. Uh, uh, it is not problem for us. After that, uh, the initial frequency is start to uh, <coughs> start to uh, drive the MOSFETs according to. Uh, output voltage uh, sensor, we compare MOSFET signal and output voltage and it increases or decreases according to resonant parameters. And it, it is about 60 kilohertz. 60 kilohertz. Because mm -hmm. I guess it somehow relates to the performance of processor you are using. And if you think in the future about these new uh, one megahertz frequencies. It may be. Then maybe this DSP performance is not enough. Uh, one megahertz may be very high frequency for uh, this kind of uh, study, 
but uh, more than a hundred killers. We test it in simulation results, and we had we had good uh, results for catching resonant frequency, but we didn't test it uh, for one megahertz. Mm -hmm. okay. It may be, but I don't know uh, sure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. More questions? If you don't see, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Professor Shinkevichius, uh, and uh, he will have a presentation on research of condensate resistance measurement using single contact substrate. Please, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, I'm um, Danis Inkevichus from uh, Kaunas University of Technology and I present a very interesting method for surface resistance measurement. Uh, this method is used for uh, thin film technology and uh, <coughs> we cannot in the technology uh, used additional uh, source of voltage or current. And so, uh, at this moment, are known traditional uh, some methods for uh, measurements of surface resistance. For example, four points, two points. And uh, we try to present method with one contact. How with one contact measure surface uh, resistance. Also, uh, known methods uh, used additional, uh, additional current or voltage sources. We create method, mathematical model of this method, and uh, experimentally tested this uh, uh, mathematical method. Our uh, equipment, experimental, uh, consists from a uh, vacuum chamber. We have evaporator with uh, heated with uh, high uh, current and metal uh, vapor uh, fall up <laughs> to our props and here we do our measurements. We have also shooter with uh, when shooter is off uh, space chart is here disappear and we have uh, possibility measure resistance without space charge because very high density of electrons. Uh, our props which we used, it is then a ribbon with two contacts area or one contact area without this. And one probe, uh, same size, is from metal to measure uh, electromotive force of evaporator, of electron emissions. Uh, electrical circuits of our experiments consist of four probes. First probe here is full metal sheets. Uh, with this probe we measure electromotive force of electro emissions. Uh, two two area, two contacts probe. <coughs> With this, this uh, probe we used some, year, some years. It is uh, a very good uh, method because produced bell-shaped signal and uh, extrema, uh, time of extrema can be used for control of process. And one contact probe, one contact probe, <coughs> This contact is grounded through this resistance. And for control, we used a traditional uh, method of uh, resistant measure, measurement with two contacts and stabiliz stabilized current with low, I if remember, 7 volts uh, voltage current. But uh, current is very small and optical uh, isolated amplifier um, uh, amplifier <coughs> and this probe uh, have no uh, 
electrical uh, circuit with uh, other uh, electrical circuits. Our experiments, uh, two contact probe, as uh, I say, with uh, extrema, bell form, bell shape form. Uh, one contact probe, <laughs> Uh, signal grow uh, monotonically to saturation state. Uh, tradici uh, traditional method uh, measurement of resistance, but uh, as you see, uh, we can uh, see true resistance from this point only, because here is saturation zone. We cannot uh, with this method uh, measure in this, in this time. And electromotive force, uh, electromotive force changes because uh, wire, uh, wire back with metal uh, is <coughs> uh, melting, uh, melted with uh, metal and surface, uh, changes surface and also changes uh, electromotive force. Uh, we created model of this method of measurements and here we see surface resistance is divided to small shapes of resistance here is equivalent uh, resistance of inner uh, inner resistance of electromotive force and here is electromotive force equivalent electromotive force because we use additional uh, tungsten uh, heater uh, for uh, more for more electrons and uh, our probe has only one area contact area uh, which is grounded uh, through resistor uh, this resistor and created mathematical model very simple mathematical model uh, differential equation uh, here is a picture uh, uh, with one probe, uh, one contact area probe, more simplified, and we uh, uh, have a solution of our differential equation for, uh, for each point uh, along uh, along probe. And here is uh, solution of this differential equation for this contact area. It is very difficult uh, equation because we have no um, how calculated uh, resistance uh, in simple method. And <coughs> some explain about uh, direct measurements. Uh, our system can direct measure about 19 mega ohms uh, surface uh, resistance. If resistance is higher, we cannot measure because we are in saturation uh, zone. But we can uh, ex extrapolate uh, this curve and calculate uh, to left <laughs> side some uh, resistance. Uh, with some errors and <coughs> how we tested uh, how we tested uh, mathematical model of this uh, method of measurements uh, this is equation of uh, potential on uh, one area of probe uh, this dashed line is measured signal and this uh, solid line is calculated from model but we have some differences uh, in each point uh, it is effect of uh, contact area of contact area uh, size uh, if contact area smaller, this uh, voltage will be smaller. We later created a uh, mathematical model that include this area and uh, <coughs> this uh, difference is, is smaller. And conclusions. Uh, we have method uh, 
uh, for surface uh, resistance uh, measure with one contact also we can use two contact but signal twice uh, <laughs> twice <coughs> better and <coughs> we have maximum uh, we have no used uh, uh, additional uh, additional uh, sources of current or voltage uh, signal monotonically increases and uh, we can uh, calculate resistance at each, in each uh, moment. Mathematical model uh, very good describe this process and uh, last conclusion mathematical model uh, will be necessary uh, <laughs> Evaluate area of, of contact plates of probes uh, this area. <coughs> this this uh, area is very small, but uh, enough to affect uh, for signals. And thanks for the attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. May I have a question, please? Uh, it's a very interesting method. Uh, since uh, nowadays we use uh, widely the printing bolts for, for, for different coils, different for measurements, uh, the Rogowski coils are very popular nowadays. Mm -hmm. Could we use your method to measure this, uh, this resistance? Of this coil, the printing printing bolts. Uh, like the this coil. There's a, there's a coil. Can uh, we use those things? Magnetic field affect condensation process, and we cannot use. Uh, cannot. Cannot use the magnetic field. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. More question? Thank you. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. Is the next uh, paper? Uh, the next presentation will be given by Dr. Ocon. Please go ahead from Wrocław University of Technology, Poland, and uh, the title is Load Flow Computations in Different Coordinate System for Power System with UPFS. Please go ahead. Lepiej tam, lepiej tam użyć tej, tego stacji, stacji. Ok, ok. Ok. I have the pleasure to present you uh, our results of our investigation uh, on uh, power flow uh, computation in power system with uh, UPFC uh, device. Uh, in power flow computation, uh, we we uh, we try to find. Uh, we, we calculate a uh, nodal uh, phasor, voltage phasor and uh, voltage phasor uh, can be presented in polar coordinate system uh, then we have voltage magnitude and uh, 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 phase voltage or in rectangu rectangular coordinate system then we have real and imaginary part of this uh, uh, voltage phasor. Uh, yes. uh, I have to add that uh, in the literature, the most popular uh, that I found is uh, the most popular is uh, powerful computation in a, a polar coordinate system. So. Uh, in power flow computation, we need to uh, solve uh, uh, n nonlinear equations. Uh, so the most, I think, uh, the most effective method is a uh, newton raphson uh, In newton raphson uh, we, we find uh, uh, in each iteration we we find a, a approximation of state vector. Uh, if we if we consider power flow uh, power flow computation in power coordinate, uh, coordinate system, uh, we can uh, we can consider problem as uh, follow here, or uh, this approach is also possible. 
uh, when we use a, a rectangle, uh, rectangular coordinate system, we have problem <coughs> uh, like here. So, uh, uh, unified power flow controller is composed from uh, two ACDC inverters. Uh, which can which can be uh, modeled as a uh, two voltages uh, two uh, controllable voltages uh, sources and uh, shunt voltage uh, magnitude of shunt voltage usually uh, in literature I, what I found is uh, minimum value is uh, 0 0.9 and maximum uh, one point uh, one uh, series voltage can uh, change from zero to uh, zero point two. Uh, when we uh, uh, for for uh, controlling uh, this uh, by controlling this voltage, we can determine uh, uh, determine. Uh, power f uh, power flow through the line. Uh, in uh, in our program, I can uh, set uh, this voltage, uh, uh, phasor of this voltage, and determine uh, power flow, or I can uh, uh, set uh, some power flow active and reactive, and calculate. Uh, uh, values of uh, this phasor. Uh, when we uh, have a UPFC, uh, we need to, to, to uh, consider this UPFC in power flow com uh, computation. We need to uh, add uh, this uh, uh, at, uh, this uh, equation to uh, to set of equation uh, in power flow uh, program. Uh, when we consider a power flow in polar coordinate system, uh, the with UPFC, the ch Jacobian uh, may looks like here. Uh, this Jacobian is for situation when we uh, set a power flow through the line with a UPFC device and we calculate uh, uh, series voltages uh, in UPFC. Here I have a second approach. So uh, now we need to look at uh, this, uh, this element of Jacobian. Uh, if we uh, take a look uh, closer at this equation, we see that when uh, this uh, voltage is close to zero, uh, the whole column uh, may be close to zero, uh, so it leads to uh, ill conditioned uh, of uh, Jacobian. Or if uh, this voltage is zero, we have all column uh, equal zero, so we have uh, 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 we have uh, Jacobian singular. So in this situation, we cannot uh, solve a problem. When we consider power flow computation in a rectangular coordinate system, uh, we don't have uh, such a problem. Uh, in some papers, uh, we can find uh, s s uh, this equation uh, uh, to, to uh, determine a starting point for a UPFC device. Uh, however, in, in my opinion, it sometimes it doesn't work uh, very well. So, uh, our investigation I, uh, we did on uh, 14 bus 
uh, IT, IEEE 14 bus test system. Uh, UPFC uh, was installed uh, between buses 4 and 5. Uh, mm, shunt inverter of UPFC operated as a voltage regulator, so uh, it, uh, it kept uh, a voltage at the node 5 on constant value. Uh, first, I uh, set uh, uh, the following uh, series voltages uh, with, uh, uh, and I change the uh, uh, phase of uh, this voltage uh, and phase angle of this voltage, and, and I determine uh, 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 power flow uh, through the line. In the uh, with the uh, UPFC device, then next I use this power flow, which I uh, uh, calculated uh, in the beginning, and I try to calculate uh, this voltage. So uh, uh, when we um, investigate a condition number. Uh, in my calculation, uh, condition number uh, say as how uh, how conditioned uh, problem is. When condition number is very high, we have very uh, ill-conditioned uh, formulation of the problem, and we can have a problem with uh, the with uh, calculation uh, of power flow. So when we have a polar coordinate system. We can see that when the uh, VCR R is uh, very small, the problem is very uh, badly conditioned. Uh, this problem we don't have for rectangular coordinate system. Uh, this uh, for rectangular coordinate polar, uh, co uh, rect rectangular coordinate system. Uh, practically, uh, uh, VC VCR uh, doesn't inf influence on condition on conditioning. So here we have a result of investigation uh, when we uh, set uh, different starting point. Here, solution was when VCR was uh, zero, and it's depending uh, which, uh, depending on starting point, we obtained uh, this uh, the following condition number in successive iteration. So when we started from a small value, we couldn't start from from zero. Uh, I started. Uh, from uh, 0 0.001. Uh, at the beginning, condition number was uh, very high, but we receive, uh, uh, receive uh, results after 10 iteration. Here, I started from the 0 0.2, and I receive a solution after 12 or 13 iteration. When the solution was, when VCR was 0 0.2, uh, we needed a smaller number of uh, iteration. When we consider a power flow in rectangular coordinate system, we can see that uh, in in unequal case, when a VCR was z zero or VCR uh, was zero point two, we have results after six iteration. So here I have uh, results, <coughs> and we can see that the polar coordinates when we have a polar coordinate system, usually we need around, I mean, uh, fifteen. Or 20 iteration, and 
it doesn't matter uh, from starting point. Uh, uh, we can see that when we uh, VCR is calculated, the situation sometimes is, is worse uh, than we have VCR uh, set as a, a 0 0.2. When we use a rectangular coordinate system, every time we have practically uh, six iterations. So, uh, presence of UPFC in power system uh, force us to increase increasing a set of values in power system uh, model. Uh, we found that a series voltage uh, can uh, can cause uh, some uh, problems, especially when we use a polar coordinate system. Uh, when we use a rectangular coordinate system, we don't have uh, such a problems, and power flow computation in uh, recta rectangular coordinate system uh, is faster. We need less iteration, but I don't know why this, uh, this formulation is less popular in literature. So, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? I mean that you proved that uh, the calculation coordinate system gave the best results, and but it has to be some reason that it, in the past it was involved to calculation. You don't you don't think? But what, what could be a reason? Maybe no, no. maybe it looks uh, simpler. I uh -huh. don't know because you know when you have a polar coordinate system, uh -huh. you have a voltage, you have a phase angle. Uh -huh. It looks like uh, more familiar than than, uh, okay. than uh, imaginary or you know, part of phase. Uh -huh. Usually, it is, it is, it is science is that somebody publishes something and everybody just try to follow him. But then just uh, okay, please go ahead. In addition to that, daily the uh, companies who distribute the, uh, the power mm -hmm. they have already programmed. Ah, by the this system. So you know, mainly what uh, still they are using, for example, for France 77. Uh -huh. So still because uh -huh. in their databases okay. running that program. So okay, maybe, maybe this is the. That people are working on. Thank you very much for the uh, explanation. Thank, you, thank day, you very much. One day I talked to one guy from Siemens. He was presenting uh, some uh, power state uh, 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 power state estimator. Uh -huh. uh, so he said uh, that uh, the uh, source, uh, the, the heart of uh, of the program, doesn't change. They change uh, only uh, yes. what uh, what. Uh, 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 Consument uh, C. So okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And is there any last presenter? Thank you very much. Last presenter. I think that's absent. It's the a, a gentleman from Slavic Republic. Is nobody? Okay. Late gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you all speakers for, for for nice presentations. Thank you for audience for just attendance and for questions. Thank you very much. I close the session. I invite you for the dinner. Thank you very much.